Welcome to Useless Agent, a safe space from cognitive dissonance and childish ideology, the shackles of corporate media, and a place where all are fair game in the eyes of the wicked. Enjoy. Stay cheesy. Welcome to a new episode with a new intro. I, I, I like it. I like it. I mean, it's a little too heavy on the bass, but um, I, I just really love uh, putting in comedians that uh, just mean the most to me. Now, the disclaimer I thought was fun um, to give you guys something different rather than saying the same shit. Um, you know, I... Another thing is, if you're gonna use those, um, if you're gonna use those guys, those uh, the the voiceover guys, you know, make sure you're using the right one. You know, for one, if you're gonna have it with lots of reverb, you should speak slowly so that way they don't just overlap each other and it sounds weird. And then if, uh, you know, if you're going to go with the, uh, you know, if you're going to go with Satan, you need to change your very cadence. Or you can do it like this if you're a fan of, like, Mind Shot. But in the end, uh, I always think you're better off just doing your own voice. Uh, so, what's today about? Today is about our fucking military. All right? I love our military. Now, personally, I am the only pers the only male in my, my uh, generation, or my, my bloodline. I am the only male, uh, firstborn male, to not go to war. <clears throat> Um, for one, the draft happened when I was in, well, well, the draft was being talked about when I was in high school. So if, um, if you were around in 2001 and you remember the chaos of 9-11 <coughs> and the chaos that 9-11 is still putting us through, um, <coughs> like, The shit that nobody asks is, like, one of my favorite questions. Why is the Patriot Act still in effect? It's still in full effect as if we were still at war. But um, we were never really at war. I mean, we went and raged war, but we were never actually at war, you know? Um World War One, World War Two. This would have affected us regardless. This would have come in our way, but 9/11 was a whole nother story. And if you want to say it's a psyop, it you're not too far off. That's literally what it was. It's a psychological experiment to change the way that we viewed our country. Um, this had been done before. 
Um, I know, I'm, I know, I'm I'm rehashing some shit. You're probably gonna hear from everybody, but you know, regardless of of speaking about not Operation Northwoods, the very fact that Northwoods was still around when Kennedy specifically said, "Get this shit out of my face, destroy it. I don't ever want to see this again." You know, uh, the fact that they kept that in a drawer somewhere shows you the loyalty they had to their very president. And that was the last chance we had at a real goddamn president. So, it is what it is. And then we can do about it. But, now, now we're in a situation where we got a dude that straight up hates our fucking military. Now, this is not a fucking uh, hyperbole in any way, shape, or form. Trump's, Trump hates our military. Trump has claimed to hate uh, suckers, losers, and has insulted Arlington Cemetery. Now, the reason why I'm starting off with this prologue uh, is because it makes no sense to me how you can be white. I, I don't even care if you're white. How you can be a human that went to war, that went into fucking the service and came out now you probably came out a better person because of it or you came out a shell of a human being if you were in the wrong place but regardless you did something that was selfless and you know even if you were doing this to enhance your own life or to better yourself or get more discipline you know a lot of guys do this they go to the army because they want some sort of guidance they don't know where to go in their lives and that's what the army relies on they rely on kids with no direction they rely on the dropouts and the idiots because those are the ones that end up end up getting falsely promised and believing the bullshit that they're going to get some sort of college experience no you're not you're going to end up legless and The biggest difference between now and Vietnam is nobody's going to spit on you, luckily. But we were smarter than that. Even after post-9-11, we didn't do that to our soldiers. We knew what what was happening was murder. We knew it was, it was just straight up murder on our end. But my guys didn't ask to do that. My guys thought they were doing the right thing. By protecting the country that they love so dear. And so they went off to the army thinking that they were going to go off and make some fucking change for the better. So another 9-11 will never happen again. And we will never have to see what we saw that day. We saw the worst of humanity that day. But we're now seeing the worst of humanity every week. And um, so... Regardless if 9-11 was a PSYOP or not, it worked. And unfortunately, we still live with those repercussions. And tens of thousands of people a year still die from the cancerous carcinogens that were in the air. So now let's get into the actual military in which Trump has many times called them suckers, losers. There's nothing in it for them, so they die for nothing. And then tries to say, we love our veterans. Dude, you don't love anything. You hate our veterans. And for some reason, our veterans don't hate you enough. So let's go ahead and jump in on the first thing. Because uh, basically the whole John McCain and Trump issue has come back. And the only reason why it's actually interesting is because McCain represents the America that we knew and the America that is loyal to the Constitution as well as the people that defend it. So when uh, Trump went out throwing shade at, at McCain saying he likes his heroes that don't get captured, you know, those horrible, sick things that he said, um, you know, it's not like the guy is perfect. The guy did piss me off. And one of the things he did 
that was probably the the most aggravating thing that McCain ever did was he showed up on the 9-11, debunking 9-11 myths. Now, this was supposed to be some sort of book that was supposed to be like a think tank or something of ideas and and debunking people that were debunking 9-11. And the truth was they really had nothing on us. We had more info than they did. So John McCain wrote the foreword to this book. And then about, I want to say six months later, he ends up being questioned by a guy on C-SPAN. And now he does the right thing in saying, I don't know. He doesn't try to lie to you. But again, if you don't know, then why the fuck are you writing the forward of something that you don't know about? So let's just go ahead and look at that, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Good job on the caller, by the way. Question. Can you explain how freefall, which requires the almost simultaneous removal of the supporting structure, can be achieved without a controlled demolition? This very question was posed to Senator John McCain by a 9-11 researcher in April 2013 during a C-SPAN broadcast. Uh, Senator McCain, the National Institute of Standards and Technology asserts that the collapse of Building 7 was caused by fire, yet they acknowledge that the first 100 feet of that collapse took place at free fall acceleration. Now, engineers will tell you that fire Look at the confusion. Them, and that the only method by which it can be accomplished is the use of free planted explosives. Your question is what? Well, how do, yeah, how do you explain this discrepancy of 100 feet of free fall? Look at the confusion on his face and the aggravation of the guy trying to say, well, what's your question? Because he knows that there's no way John McCain's going to have an answer. Use of explosives. Uh, to tell you the truth, this is an area that I am not very familiar. And if you would drop me a note and mention that we talked on C-SPAN, I'd be glad to get you a... Uh, a more complete answer, but I... Uh... It is unfortunate that Senator McCain could not answer, as he is the person who wrote the foreword to the popular mechanics book, Debunking 9-11 Myths. So, there you go. You have a guy that doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, writing a foreword to a book that he didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. So, um, this is my pro- that was my biggest problem with John McCain. And again, I can understand from his point of view, since, you know, the guy is a war hero. The man was put in a POW, he was a POW, he's a prisoner of war, and he purposely refused to get out. Um, The North Vietnamese actually offered a special thing for him uh, because of his, his, I I believe, because of his uh, status in the army. But um, the North Vietnamese were going to release him from his his prison. Now, according to uh, the code of ethics of a soldier, you do not escape unless your comrade can escape with you. So being a man, and when I say a man, I mean the best of humanity. I don't mean having a dick and balls. I don't care if you have a dick and balls. Women have that too. It's called testicular feminization. Grow up. So when I say that's a man, I mean that's the best of us. So when the North Vietnamese had come up and told him, hey, we're going to let you out because, you know, your country's kind of making a stink about it, so... Uh, and remember, he was not the John McCain that we know, so he was just another soldier at the time. But he was offered release. And what does he do? He closed the fucking gate and he said, no, I will be released when my boys get out. So he refused to end this torture, end this fucking hell that he is in. He chose to stay there and as long as his boys, his innocent boys, were there too. He didn't want to fucking have a better life if they can't. That, to me, is the best of the best. That is the best of humanity, humility, however you want to call it. 
whatever nomenclature you want to use, I don't care. Syntax doesn't matter. Context is the fucking key. So uh, the next thing is, uh, let's go on uh, the fact that Trump is still going at this. Now, this is the same guy that literally went to Arlington Cemetery to call everybody a piece of shit and a sucker. If I was Millie or if I was, uh, what was the name of the guy? Kelly. If I was Kelly, you know, standing there stuck beside him every day. And knowing that I have a son that died in the military and he is going to call everyone in Arlington Cemetery suckers and losers uh, because uh, John Kelly had told him, you know, these are the bravest men, you know, that we have to revere. The only other bravery is the men in Arlington. And uh, what's it called? He said, you know, that they're losers, they're suckers. There was nothing in it for him, so who gives a fuck? If I was Kelly right there, I would have knocked him senseless because that's your son he just pissed on. He just pissed on your son's grave, and you let him. So that's where lies the question. What's worse? Is it, what is worse? Is the tyrant worse or is it the good man that does nothing? In my opinion, that is worse than evil in itself because you have no excuse. You knew what the right thing was to do. That moron, this moron over here doesn't know what the fuck is up or down. This guy's in a constant state of outer space. He doesn't know where up, down, left or right is. But if you are uh, what Michael Flynn or whatever, uh, whatever, or John Kelly, and you hear that shit and you do nothing, I hope your son sees you and punches you in the fucking face right at the gates, you know, if, if there is an afterlife. Oh, by the way, speaking of, I think we are going to be mentioning afterlife in uh, today's episode of uh, Useless and Skinny. It's going to be on at 6 p.m., uh, we're going to be going, uh, we're going in raw and we're, we're going in blind again. So it's just going to be a fun conversation. Neither of us know what we're going to throw at each other, but we're just going to have a free for all. We hope everybody jumps in the chat box and joins us because that's really the whole point of useless and skinny shoot the shit. All right. So let's go back to this fucking moron. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. I gave him the kind of funeral that he wanted, which as president, I had to approve. I wasn't a fan of John McCain. I figured there would be a chance that I would catch it. Sometimes I'd be with in groups of, for instance, Gold Star families. They come, they come within an inch of my face sometimes. They want to hug me and they want to kiss me. What sacrifice have you made for your country? I think I've made a lot of sacrifices. Uh, I work very, very hard. I've created thousands. Me, 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 me. When someone says, what sacrifices have you made for the country? The last words you should be saying is me, 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 me. And the last thing you should be mentioning is I work because work is a matter of uh, self-preservation. It is literally being selfish because you're worried about yourself. I mean, nothing wrong with it. But if someone were to say, what have you done for this world? And I said, uh, I made a bunch of money selling weed. No, motherfucker. Yeah, I got some people employed too. I had to get other people to sell the same weed. But that don't mean shit, you know. And the truth is he's never sacrificed anything he wouldn't even sacrifice his time to go visit veterans when you have a president that literally tells your your uh, joint chiefs of staff i don't want to be surrounded by no goddamn cripples i don't want to be surrounded by no damn armless people and according to this fucking bloated moron uh if you got shot in the arm, that meant they had to take your whole arm off because of the gangrene. 
And uh, just the amount of revisionist history you get from this guy is hilarious. So I'm going to let him finish and then let's shit all over him. Thousands and thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs. A man came up to me and oh, he this is so me his wrong. purple heart. And I said, man, that's like, that's like big stuff. I always wanted to get the purple heart. This was much easier. Okay. That's not funny. That's not funny. That's not satirical. That's not funny in the fucking slightest. And, and this is coming from a guy that laughs at everything. I'm the kind of <laughs> I'm the kind of guy that laughs in the funeral. Uh, I have a history of taking off my shirt. It's been. I'm sorry, the lyrics for one week came in my head. But seriously, um, I'm the kind of guy that does. I, I laugh at funerals. I'm not the kind of guy to cry. I'm the kind of guy that tries to lighten everything up. If someone gave me a purple heart, I would never accept it. Period. You don't do that. You don't accept another man's personal uh, purple heart. You hug him. You thank him for his service. And you say, there's not a chance on earth that I have earned that. That is yours. Thank you for letting me see it. Thank you for letting me touch it. I'll take a picture with it, whatever you want, but I am not taking your purple heart. You earned that. And this man came up to you, this disgusting peasant that suffered for this flag that we carry around, that we love so dearly, because it means freedom. And that man offered you something you should have never accepted, but he offered you something that meant more to him than anything in the fucking world. That thing should have been going to his son, that should have gone to his grandson, that should have gone to anyone in his family not to a rich bulbous piece of shit that is going to leave it in his lint filled pocket and literally dangle it around like car keys this is pathetic it's fucking embarrassing and it honestly puts hate in my heart because I have lost so many friends to the military. I've lost so many friends due to pointless wars. I, again, I'm the only person in my family that didn't go because I refused to fight for Bush. And I refused to kill innocents. And that's what they wanted from me. Um, the man that gave that, the man that had that purple heart, you don't get a purple heart for killing innocents. You don't get a purple heart for fucking just going to war. You did something amazing, selfless, and almost godlike. And you're going to give it to a man that straight up wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. You're giving it to a guy who ran from the draft making up excuse after excuse because he was too stupid to fucking go to a real fucking college and have the intelligence to be too busy for it and have a legal reason not to go. Instead, he did what every other fucking white boy did that had the opportunity. I'm not saying all white people, but every rich white fuck went to their daddy and begged them to get them out. And... These motherfuckers would say, oh, I got this politician in my pocket. Oh, I got this politician in my pocket. Don't worry, you ain't going nowhere. Where the fuck is our guy in our pocket? No, we don't get a guy in our pocket. But you know what the guy gets? He gets your purple heart in his pocket. This world makes no fucking sense to me anymore. And it's starting to fucking really kill me on the inside. <sighs> A purple heart is not meant to be given away. A purple heart is meant to be cherished and is meant to be given to your bloodline. So that way they know, no matter what, 
not about patriarchy, not about patriotism, not about any of that shit, but to know that that person, your family, was that goddamn brave, all right? That's what that represented. And the fact that you put it in your pocket shows that bravery is something you will never possess. This is disgusting, and it makes me want to cry. Luckily, I have sunglasses. <laughs> Straight up, that is fucking horrible. And uh, I honestly uh, wish him nothing but the worst life has to offer him. Uh, veterans are some of the most beautiful people in the world. Um, some of them came back as shells of a man that they once were, shells of a woman that they once were. I've watched more friends come home and I wish they had just passed away because they came home a completely different person and honestly, they hated themselves. I had one friend come back that was so ashamed of himself, so fucking furious with what he had done over there that he started living on the edge completely. He eventually died, but he needed to. And as horrible as that sounds, he needed to. Because what that Guantanamo Bay, the actual war, all that shit, what it did to him is worse than any dictator could ever torture you with. And he was left worse than anyone could ever ask for rather than death. And it is because of that that they are not only the most respected people, in my opinion, but they're some of the most beautiful people on earth. All right. Love you guys. That's all I have to say for today. Um... I have never cared much for my government, but I will always support my troops because we are those troops. All right. Love you guys. Love you, brothers. Love you, sisters. Please be peaceful. Stay peaceful. Stay yourselves. And I will see you on the other side. Most of all, enjoy the new theme song and uh, stay cheesy. Welcome to Useless Agent. A safe space from cognitive dissonance and childish ideology, the shackles of corporate media, and a place where all are fair game in the eyes of the wicked. Enjoy. Stay cheesy.